Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm back in the lab with Coach Miguel. We've been working through a speed series. So we're into phase three now. So phase one was all about acceleration. Phase two was about top speed. And now today is all about changing direction. So how quickly you can go from going in one direction to going in the opposite direction. So this is gonna be really football specific because obviously in the game of football, we're not always going in straight lines. We're changing direction all the time. So we're gonna be adding in a little bit of stimulus work in at the end. So having to react to a certain object or a certain command that Coach Miguel gives, which is also reflective of the game of football because all the time the picture is changing. You might be running in one direction and the ball gets switched or it takes a bubble or something happens and you have to change direction quickly and react to that situation. So this is gonna be a really good session today. I'm looking forward to it. Typically, we usually go through a few exercises and then we also include some drills as well as some tips on our biomechanics that are gonna help us run more efficiently and improve our overall performance. So hopefully you're looking forward to it. Just wanna say a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites to analytics and marketing tools, Squarespace is the only one place to grow your online presence and manage your business. But let's go over to the training facility and work on our change of direction. All right, so this is the third installment of our speed series. And today we're really just gonna focus on the fundamentals of change of direction and agility. And so what I want us to do, this is gonna be really simple, all right? And I'm just gonna assume that, you know what, you're an athlete, you're seeing me for the first time, and I'm gonna go through a series of checkpoints before we can get into the fun stuff, just to see how you move and provide some coaching checkpoints to you, to everyone watching this video. And when I say change of direction, let me be very clear. So if we're gonna train change of direction, that means I'm gonna tell you, Michael, that you're gonna start at this line or this point, and you're gonna work to that line or point, and you're gonna work back, all right? So if I said, hey, you know what? Uh, for this drill, we're literally, it's gonna be as simple as this. This is change of direction. On the clap or on the go command, how about the go command? You're gonna sprint at about 70%. You're gonna put your foot in the ground and you're gonna just cut and come right back. That, this is real simple change of direction, all right? So nice and easy on the go command. I just want you to go five yards, cut, and come right back. Go. Go. There we go. So what I'm gonna look for is when you come down here and cut, so come on down. And so, yep, go ahead and cut. Yep, there we go. Now come on back. Stick. Okay, so now one of the things I'm, I'm gonna teach is when an athlete is, if you're practicing this on the pitch, on the side, wherever you're at, when you come to that point, what I want you to do is I want you to turn. I want your hip and your ankle to be in, facing the same direction here. All right, so, so when I come, all right, I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna plant, and I want you just to stick, okay? So we'll do it again. So come down on go, stick and hold, go. There we go. Now, so from here, what we should, what we wanna see is, is, is your hip and ankle matched up? Yep, all right, so now I know, you know you're coming back this way. So when you know that, right, there should be, we wanna see a real, a nice angles wide so I can push off and get back that direction, all right? If I were to, if I, if I did my change of direction and one, let's say I turn, but I kept my hips forward, I was thinking, I, it's an injury waiting to happen, all right? So again, I wanna stick. Now I know I'm coming back, so I need to be able to get out. So the point on that is I don't ever wanna cut I don't have any space to push off. So when you come back and cut, make sure you maintain nice wide stance, plant, and get out of that position. All right, so let's try that again. So don't let the feet get too close together, and go. There we go, yep. Now, one of the things we wanna be mindful of is the shoulders going past the hips. So if I come down, I'm coming down, and I cut, but my top half, it kind of disassociates, and I come past here, I'm slow. That means I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck, I'm not in an ideal position there. 
I'm gonna get beat on the pitch, all right? So, it's one of the things, if you guys are watching this, just make sure that, again, whenever I'm going to cut, hip, ankle, match, I've got plenty of space because I need to push out of that position and get back to that line in this change of direction drill. Real simple, fundamentals. I also want to keep notice what's happened with my, I'm kind of leaning back in the direction I need to go in. So our top half, never, we never want it outside our hip or our knee. It's not an ideal, it's an injury waiting to happen. So now we're gonna increase the space. We're gonna let you build up a little bit more speed. It's gonna make, right, you, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, right? So you going into cutting, again, simple change of direction. I'm telling you the point, you're gonna make that cut in the direction you're coming back in. All right, so let's back up a little bit. We're gonna sprint, let's go about 85%, all right? You're gonna make that cut. Keeping in mind one other thing that I wanna mention here is if I know I need to come back in this direction, or if even if I was coming in this direction, I know I need to come back, what should happen is I should start to feel my body in space and time, right? And where I know if I'm going to cut, again, I'm in line, I'm starting to lean back in this direction, this is the way I need to go. But the pressure on my feet, all right? This is, some people will find this helpful. Whenever you're going to cut, you really wanna be more on the inside of your foot here, all right? If I allow my, my foot, really the outside edge of my foot when I'm cutting, no matter the direction, uh, if that outside edge takes most of my like pressure, my body weight, I can roll my ankle, more likely to roll my ankle or just not be in an I ideal push off angle. And change of direction, cutting, agility is a combination. When we get to agility, it's gonna be your athletic ability and your ability to react to external stimulus in real time and organize your body to solve whatever problem is presented and move in and out of the, those shapes and patterns. We're gonna sprint down 10 yards, put your foot in the ground and come right back. And go. Yes. And go. Yes. So one of the things I like, and you can see in this video, is now you had more space, you started to chop your feet and you begin to lower your center of mass, getting ready for a predetermined change of direction. Another skill that I think is gonna be helpful for many of you guys watching this is the crossover step. So the, the crossover step, like really any change of direction, we want a good base, all right? I want, I want, essentially I want good push off angles, all right? So if we're just, again, controlled environment, change of direction, I know the way I'm going and maybe if I, I might not be coming back, Here's a crossover step, very basic. Again, good athletic position. What I'm gonna do is cross over, stick, and hold. All right, so I might come this way. All right, cross over, here, stick, cross over step. All right, so again, I'm here. I want to cross over, flip my hips, get back down into position. I call it a ready position, the universal athletic position. All right, I might be bouncing around. I might come here. I might come here. We see it in a variety of sports. So let's go, we'll go to your, let's go to your right. All right, on the go command, stick it and just hold it. Go. There we go. We're gonna go to the left here. Again, this is change of direction. You know the direction, all right? So on the go command, you're gonna just come back to your left. Go. There we go. Let's go back to the right and then back to the left. I'll start you, you do the rest. Go. There it is. Okay, relax. So what can I do out of that? Well, it's, if you can get in and out of that position, well, you could go literally a crossover to a sprint, crossover to a run out. I mean, uh, there's a number of things you can do to get your feet where they need to be. Why? So that you can get your center of mass in the direction you, that, the sport, that the game demands, all right? Let's just go simple backpedal here, okay? Simple backpedal, and I just want you to backpedal just about five yards, all right? Five yards, stick your foot in the ground. Again, this is a backpedal change of direction drill, real simple. Backpedal, 
When you get to that line, you're just gonna sprint back this way. Okay? Go. There we go. All right there. Yep. For our last change of direction, which I think is fundamental, just a shuffle. Shuffle down five, come back five. All right. But again, it's these little nuances, these I think really what we should know as far as like positioning right, uh, posture, that's gonna make a big difference, help us to be more efficient movers. The little things make a big difference, okay? So, what we're gonna do is just shuffle, all right? We're gonna shuffle down five and then shuffle back. Again, a controlled drill, this is change of direction. You're just gonna shuffle and then come back. Go. Yeah, it looks good, excellent. So, I didn't say anything. One of the things that I always look for is when someone, when an athlete is gonna shuffle, again, I want a good, I want a good position. Why? So that I can push off. If I'm starting here at this drill, my backside leg has to push. My front side, I'm always looking to see as a coach what's happening with that front side leg, all right? Because, guys, I guarantee you, this adjustment will make you a more efficient lateral mover, all right? So, this front side foot should open up. If it does not, and I'm shuffling like this, I am not using the musculature that I need to help me move in, in, in a small space more efficiently. All right, as soon as I open that foot up, now I'm getting my hamstring involved and I can get a push and a pull action. If we look at the video, your foot made the adjustment. I didn't say anything, I wanted to see. All right, so if you have not been taught how to shuffle, the backside leg, or if I know I'm going in that direction, and this drill I do, backside needs to push, front side needs to open, and then opposite needs to happen. So it's a push, pull, push, pull, lateral gait cycle, okay? All right, so now we're gonna focus on agility work. And in this drill, this is considered an open drill. We essentially have 10 yards here, this open box. All right, so I'm, you're gonna start in the middle here, and I'm gonna call out a movement. It could be a shuffle. It could be a karaoke. It could be um, a, a back pedal you're gonna to have to respond to what you hear and change direction. Each time I call out a movement, you're gonna to go to the right first, all right? So if I call out a back pedal to start the drill, you'll go to the right. And then when I call it the next movement, you know you're coming back to the opposite direction. And we're working in this direction, all right? Start with the back pedal. Back pedal. Karaoke. Shuffle. Back pedal, shuffle, karaoke, shuffle, back pedal, relax. So chaotic in nature, it doesn't matter what level you're on. Learn the fundamentals, the basics, a closed drill, change of direction, you know where you're gonna go, where you're gonna stop, and then you wanna get to open drills that are chaotic in nature, and you have to listen, it's an external stimulus, and then I have to respond accordingly. And it's a, you know it's a good drill, and it gets your heart rate going. Yeah. It simulates what it's like to be in actual competition. You don't know when and where, what you're gonna have to do, when you're gonna have to do it. You don't know what your defender is gonna do. You don't know where the ball is gonna be on the pitch. You have to react. So our next drill here, what I'm gonna have you do is, I have two colors, cones here. You're gonna start at this end. And now you don't know what color I'm gonna call. Well, obviously in this case there's only two options, but you're gonna have to listen again. You have to listen and respond. You're gonna sprint down. I'm gonna call a color. I want you to m cut and sprint off in that direction. Does that make sense? All right, we ready? Go. Orange. Hey. There we go. Okay. Go. White. Yay, there we go. Yes, sir. All right, so on to our last drill here. So I love the tennis ball, and now reactionary. Again, these are the kind of drills that you want to train if you're an athlete. This is the external stimulus, all right? So you're gonna back up just a little bit there. And guys, we can do this where you're having to just accelerate to retrieve this ball as soon as it leaves my hands. All right, so now again, we started with a fundamental basic change of direction. Now we're going reactionary base. And now, in this case, you're just gonna accelerate, but we can change it up. We can get creative and have you move out of different positions. 
for the sake of this drill, I'm here, I'm five yards away. As soon as you see me launch that ball down, you're just gonna sprint out. So you're not reacting to anything auditory, it's, vis it's visual now. We ready? <laughs> easy, 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 right? So now I can say, I want you to shuffle out of that position. It's, can, you get, can we get here quickly on a shuffle? All right, here we go. As soon as it moves, you're just gonna shuffle. All right, how about this? Let's give you, I'll give you a few shuffles and you can, you can sprint out of it, okay? A few shuffles and then you can sprint out of it. Hey, there we go. Again, now I can even do, I can even say, I want you to backpedal, turn 180, and the cat, we can mix it up. Yeah. All right, so just know again, if you are an athlete at any level, you want to train reactionary drills, open drills, where you have to respond, not to a coach, but to what you see and to what you hear. And if you can start to, if that can make, if that makes up most of your change of direction, training, that will get you closer to real life game-like situations. And when you train, that's what you want. All right, again, there is a time and a place for closed drills. That's the easy stuff. The research does show when you need to respond and you respond in real time, it puts a strain on your body. I mean, uh, and so that's been documented. So you want that cognitive load, and you want that physical load in your prep because that's what you're gonna get in, on the pitch. Does that make sense? Yeah, so just, again, we just gave you guys a few examples here with the tennis ball. Get creative with this. Now we can increase the distance. I can do less of a bounce, have fun with it. I could have you kneeling and sprinting out of the position. There's limitless options, all right? So that's the workout with Coach Miguel complete. So much value packed into today's video for you guys to take away. So watch it back, take down some notes and see what you can apply to your own technique and also work on some of those drills and you're gonna see a huge improvement in your change of direction. Also check out episode one and two that we did together. In episode one, we worked on acceleration. In episode two, we worked on our top speed mechanics as well as some other drills to help you move more efficiently and more powerfully, which is gonna to contribute to a faster running speed. So check those out and as well as those links I'm going to leave links to Coach Miguel's Instagram and website in the description box below. Check them out and if you're ever in the Tulsa area try and get a session in with him and you'll see a huge improvement in your overall performance. Another huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is where I built my very own website 7mlctraining.com. It's become the central hub of my brand. It allows me to put everything 7mlc training related in one place including my Instagram my YouTube, my podcast, and my programs. So if you have a brand or an online business and you've ever considered building a website, check out Squarespace. They make it really easy to build a professional looking website with all their templates. You don't need to know anything about coding or web design and you can represent your brand in the best way possible. And if you use the link in my description, www.squarespace.com slash 7MLC, you can get 10% off your first website. But I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, make sure you smash the like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos and I will see you guys in my next video.